Welcome back. It is winter here in Utah and it is freaking freezing. I know a lot of us don't spend a lot of time in our campers in the winter, but the reality is for some, we're living in them. And our buddy Chet is living in his and it's cold. It is snowing and it sucks here. <laughs> so we are gonna get some skirting on his trailer. He is spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month on propane. And I was talking to him like, that's just, we need to figure something out. So we reached out to Easy Snap and we're gonna go with them and show you what their product does and how easy it is from everything I can see online. It's gonna go on really easy, but the first thing we have to do is measure it. So we're gonna go ahead and measure it, write it all down and show you how to submit the actual measurements on their website. First thing we need to do is count up the slides. So this is a Silverado. I believe it's a Keystone. Silverado, but uh, it has four slides. So we have the small kitchen slide here, the living room slide over on this side, and then around the back side, we also have two slides back there. So a living room and a kitchen slide. So we're gonna have to calculate those in as we do this. A lot of people, if they're doing this, they'll also do this front area right up under here, but we're just gonna skirt the bottom for right now. And if we decide to add to it later, we'll do that. How long do you think it's gonna be, Kara? Just eyeballing it. How long? 30... I'm saying 34. Uh, I think it's longer than that. You think so? Seven. 37? Let's look at the sticker. 38. So Kara is going with 38 for the box. I said 34 for the box. Um, she'll probably be right, but let's see. Jesse's trying right, to, to the back, squeeze his way. We're gonna go to this box right here. And we are at 20 feet and about three inches. So it's about 20 feet, you said? Okay. Let it suck in. And you went to the edge of the slide here? Yep. And then to the edge of the box right here. We are on. Oh, there we go. Sorry. All right. And what are we at there, Kara? We are almost 15 feet. We'll call it 15. So we have 20 feet and about 15. So I'm going to call it, put an extra foot on that because I want to make sure that we have enough material. I'd hate to order it and not get enough. So I'm going to call it 36. So Kara was closer. So I guess I owe you dinner. But uh, so we're going to call it 36 feet for the box. And we have an eight foot. Now we need to measure the slides, the depth of the slides to add that on. So come on down and we'll measure that. This slide here is smaller than the other slides and it is just right about two feet. So we'll call it two feet there. And this one here is just about three feet. So we'll call it three feet. On the other side, those two are three feet as well. So we'll add that to our measurements as we input everything. And I'm just gonna call that middle slide three feet as well. Cause what the heck is it gonna hurt to have a little bit extra. Kara went through and drew this all out to help with the measurements. That way we don't forget when we're entering this. All right, Kara, do you wanna explain what you've done here? Uh, well, this is my beautiful drawing. <laughs> So this is our top view showing us where our slides are. This is obviously where the, the uh, fifth wheel portion starts. Um, we did our kind of our initial measure to the door, door, you know, that way. And then this is our side view. Not that I really needed a side view, but we did measure from the ground, from the box to the ground, and then our total length here. We are avoiding this area just because cost. <laughs> yeah, cost and not not ne not really necessarily needed for yeah. that kind of the fifth wheel area there. Pretty rough drawing, but we got the information we needed. Yes. It's time to go get a burger that you earned since you guessed the closest number. But we'll go ahead and show you how we enter it as well. Pretty easy from what I've seen online and I've seen some other product reviews that I think this is gonna work really well. So as soon as we get it all entered and shipped here, then we'll show you the actual install. I'm just gonna jump on and show you how easy it is to order through Easy Snap. So I'm just gonna to go to the product info here. We are gonna do RV skirting. Scroll on down. Uh, 
kits work for all RVs, and we have our calculator here. So we're just going to select our type of RV, which is a fifth wheel, select the length, which we had a 36 foot, um, but I want a little bit extra, so I'm going to put, go 38. And number of slide outs, four slide outs. And then click for current cells and results. All right, then we come here, and it is time to pick which skirting we need. So I think we need the 130 foot length skirting for a fifth wheel. So go ahead and click on that. So it looks like it's be, going to be right around there. Uh, it gives you kind of a base price right here before we add on some stuff. So as I scroll down here, I need to pick which fasteners I'm going to use. I'm going to go with these 10-inch spacing ones with the 3M stick and the self-tapper screw. I do want to order a few extras, so I'm going to throw in 20 extras just so we have them. Then his trailer is gray, so let's order gray. And the skirting, we're going to go with gray as well to match his trailer. Now right here you have your height, and you can order a 46 inch tall or a 60 inch tall, and it says with slides it's best. So also the uh, back of his trailer is a little bit higher than the front where it's at, so we're going to go with the 60 inch. Velcro by the foot. Uh, let's go with 10 feet of Velcro, just in case he has to put in some panels. We are going to do the PVC pipe frame on the bottom, so we need the clamps for that. It does come with a storage bag, but uh, we aren't going to do the storage bag on this time. Okay, so looking through, it has all of our stuff. So it looks like we are at 1,807. So I'll go ahead and add that to cart. Now, there could be some current deals and stuff whenever you do this to actually save you some money, and it is free shipping, so that's nice as well. In the end, super easy to go through and make sure you're ordering everything. It has all this nice instructions down here as well to tell you what you need to do, but you can always call them and they will help you as well. I think it was last week we got over here to our buddy Chet's uh, trailer and measured for his RV skirting. And we kind of figured it'd be like three weeks before it actually got here. And it came three days later. But we had to wait till the weekend to get enough time to get over here, plus snowstorms and stuff like that. So we are going to try to get his new RV skirting installed today. This skirting is from Easy Snap. And so far, I have been super impressed with it. We took some time and went through and researched different brands and all that sort of stuff. And I think this is going to be the way to go for us. Uh, hopefully it goes on as easy as it looks like in the videos, but you never know until you, you get into it. One thing I'm going to try to make sure of is to not get in a hurry because I don't want to mess this up. Uh, we have one big sheet supposedly. I haven't opened it or anything. And if I mess it up, then we're going to have problems. So I'm going to try to take my time, lay things out and try not to mess this up. <laughs> but we have another storm coming in. So we have to get it done this weekend. He is burning hundreds of dollars a month in propane. And last week it got down to one degree here. So frozen pipes, all sorts of crap. And he doesn't need to be dealing with this. So it's time to get this done. From what I've seen online, the first step is to kind of lay out your base. And the base weighting that they recommended is this three quarter inch PVC pipe. So we're going to go through and kind of lay it out, see where we're at, and then just start getting it fitted together. Uh, the one thing is I'm going to have to make sure we come out around the slides, those sort of things. I did the math, so we're probably about, you know, 100 feet short, but, you know, luckily I don't teach math. <clears throat> So as I was saying, with the slide outs, we'll build the framework out just a little bit. So that way we can have it nice and tight all the way around. I've went around, laid out all the pipe. I think I have enough. Uh, put out the elbows and the T's and all that sort of stuff. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start marking all the way around the trailer, get that figured out. While Chet's putting together the base, I'll 
drill in the holes or vice versa. That way we both aren't just standing on top of each other. Uh, and I think this will go a little bit quicker, but I guess we need to actually open up the stuff and find out where everything is. So come on over here and let's get this opened up. Now, this isn't a complete unboxing because I already, I got a little antsy. See what was in here. These are the clips for our base. So they're just three quarter inch clip to the PVC. Then I don't see anything else. So I'm hoping it's all in the box here. I opened up the box um, just to see what it looked like. But um, let's just give it a pull here. All right. In the Nothing tube. Else in, oh, it's in the tube. Well, that's handy. Oh, well that works out. All right, so we have our Velcro. We have all of our self-tapping screws. We have the little connectors and the buttons. Huh, all right. Well, that'll work out nice. I wouldn't have guessed they would be in the tube, but. So if you ever order this, all the stuff's in the tube. Easy Snap knows how to package stuff. This comes out pretty easy. I do really like this material. It's, it's gonna match the trailer, I think, pretty well. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go through, we have some alcohol. We're going to mark every 10 inches and we're gonna start screwing in the little buttons to get that all kind of set up and laid out. Inside the tube has all of the pieces. And from what I can tell, as of right now, we have our self-tapper screws that we're going to be screwing in, but we screw them in through these. These are the 3M sticky, uh, the 3M sticky part. We'll peel it off, we'll stick it, but we'll put the screw through as well. So we're gonna go through and we got them gray colored so they'll kind of match the RV as well as can be. Then you put on these black ones. The black ones are what the, the skirting material will go through. So you'll poke through with the skirting material. And then these buttons go on the exterior of that to hold the skirting up to the other clips. And I think it's gonna look really good. The colors are pretty dang close. We wanted it to look um, as factory as possible. So I think these colors are pretty dang close to the same color. So I think it's gonna look really good. We're just gonna go through, mark every 10 inches and start putting them on. If you're just using the sticky ones, you're supposed to go every six inches and it's way too cold for that. So I, I think that with the self tapper is gonna be a better option anyways in the long run. Like I said earlier, I'm trying to think this through before I get going too fast. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming around using Kara's really fancy ruler, beautiful, and marking just one inch down uh, off of this because that's where we're going to put our screws. Can't see the line. So just using a pencil. I, it's hard to see on this gray, but... So once I get that marked all the way around, I'm going to go through and mark every 10 inches. And once I mark every 10 inches, then we can start setting the screws right there. That's the plan at least. They really recommend using the alcohol, especially if you're using the uh, the 3M sticky buttons. But it has to be over 60 degrees for like four days to do that, and it's nowhere near 60 here. So we're going to screw them in. So the alcohol doesn't matter as much, but we're going to go through and clean every spot before we stick them on anyways. To try to avoid losing pieces, I'm just going to cut these open and put them into the bucket. Because I am notorious for dropping and losing different connectors. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this first one is in the right spot. We're about an inch down below, so we'll have an inch or two of overhang up here, and that'll just screw in right through there. So we'll put one right here, one right down here, then we're going to come down around the door, just kind of measuring and coming around, and we'll work our way around all these different bay doors. And then once we get it up with the bay doors, we'll just cut around. At least that's the plan. I have my alcohol here. I'm just gonna go through and clean the spot. That way it should stick a little bit better. Just like that. Peel off this little sticky piece. 
you can see this little seam is at halfway, so I'm just gonna put that right on my line. And press and hold. Now I'll put my screw right through there. I'm just gonna give it a second set. I'm gonna go through and put these, then put my screws in. So far, so good. This is seeming to go pretty easy, just like they said it would, but I don't wanna to speak too early because <laughs> I've been hours on projects that I thought would be easy before. But for right now, this isn't going too bad. So how's it going, Kara? It's too far apart. Yes, those are too far apart. There's probably a, a spot in between oh. that you missed. See, I end up washing my marks off and then I can't, <laughs> I gotta do them one at a time. Then I know where they're at. Kara's getting way more accomplished. Chet and I are talking about the good old days way too much. Hey, we're getting stuff done. Hey, look, he's got... Yeah, he's almost done with the he's whole... almost done. ...whole base. Yeah. No, yeah, he's cruising. Right. <laughs> it's right. It's right. I don't know. Hey, I know who it's for, so it'll do fine. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Um, I said I guess you had to come in here fully because of the sewer. Yeah, well, or you'd get just air coming back behind there. Mm -hmm. So you want the best seal possible. That's the tricky part is doing all these little spots around the slide outs. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, these little things are sticky little buggers. Even oh. if you just barely, they, they're not coming off. Yeah, you barely touch it on there, it's, it's stuck. So you make sure it's in the right spot before you stick it. <laughs> But you, you almost have it done. There's only a few left to get down this side and then we can start putting the screws in. It's going pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, this is the most tedious. Well, maybe Chet. Well, having to as of right now, yeah, Chet has oh. probably the most tedious going through and building the piping and all that. But yeah, it's really easy so far. When we ordered, they said, don't be afraid to call, ask for help, all those sort of things. And so far so good, but their customer service has been really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're looking for RV skirting, Easy Snap so far is really, really great to work with. Just to give you an idea of the piping, Chad has taken it around, down through each slide. When I looked online on the YouTube videos on this, a lot ran cross pieces. So we thought, okay, if we have enough, we will. I didn't know if we'd have enough. It ended up working out just right. Chet said my math was right when it was just lucky. So we have one cross piece that will go all the way. Right. Tying the whole thing together, but I think that should be good enough. Now we could put in more cross pieces and if we have problems with the skirting not staying down, we'll add, go buy some more PVC and add in some more pieces. But I think we're gonna be good, especially since where Chet's at, we don't have a lot of wind here. If it was over at our place, we're, we live in a wind tunnel. So we'd want to do that to get a little bit extra. And then one thing they also recommend to help hold it down is maybe putting some rocks or concrete bricks or something like that down underneath as well on the skirting once we get it in there. To give you a good idea of how it's going to look with our snaps before we put the screws on, you can see we've just went around each bay. Just all the way down. One thing we did is we ordered extra snaps because we didn't want to run short. So when you place your order, you might want to think about it because going around all these different bay doors, water heaters, all those sort of things, you're going to use a few extra. It's not just a straight line deal. Factor that in as you go through and place your order. It's just maybe you want to throw in a few extra because shipping it all at once is going to be way cheaper than having to order more and getting them shipped and all that sort of stuff. Kara is just about done with this side.
I think we're on to the next step. We've put in all of the, the little buttons. We've got them stuck on here. Now we're gonna go through and put the self-tapping screws through. The nice thing with the location on this, this is all just sheet metal down through here. So the little self-tappers shouldn't hit into anything. We went around and checked everywhere that we thought there could be wiring or plumbing or anything like that, and we didn't see any. So fingers crossed, <laughs> we should be good, but gonna go through and set all the screws down through here. It's always so nerve wracking drilling holes in somebody else's trailer. <laughs> but we just have these little self-tappers not very big. They're just going to go right through the center here and just going to start setting them. Just like that. Now I just need to do that like 100, 150 more times. Kara told me, don't dump both those in the bucket. I dumped the self tappers and the little black caps, the easy snaps, and now they're all mixed up. So I'm going to have to go through and fix what I did. If you're doing this, it is way easier to have a few separate things to keep everything in rather than trying to put them all in one. Uh, so every time you undo one, you know, just have a separate bag to put stuff in. Just one of those little, you know, hacks to make it a little bit easier. It's like kind of... You know Chet's pretty trusting when he lets me drill holes in his trailer. <laughs> I got faith in you. <laughs> you shouldn't, buddy. You really shouldn't have faith in me. As we cruise through getting the skirting put on, Kara is coming through with the wind. She brought food. Wynn got burgers and Cokes. So now it's time for a break, eat a burger, then we'll get back to it. Mm. Burger for Kara. The fun of going to the Santa Queen, right? Always good to go to the local burger shop. And of course, since you're in Utah, have to get the fry sauce. Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Next up, put these little, I guess they're they're the easy snaps um, or the pins or whatever. They just go right over. So if Kara comes over here, you can see it. They just clip right over, just give them a push, just like that. Now the fabric's gonna go over that and then there's a button top. Yeah, we're just gonna walk around, put on about a hundred of these things, and move on to the next step. Well, the boss made us cut our lunch a little short. However, we did get reinforcements. If you remember Ronnie, who fixed up our oldie but goodie, he's here to help us out and finish out our project. Well, I came up here with uh, Jesse and Kara to help out with this trailer and get this skirting put on. And it's a pretty good system, pretty nice setup. These are easy to snap on. And then once we put the skirting to over top of these, I'm assuming that there's a push pin over this, but like I said, I just showed up and I was told, okay, get to work. Just start snapping stuff together. So, but it's going quick. We're, uh, Chet's made it around. I've made it kind of halfway and this is, this is going to go good. It's going to be done in no time. So I'm just going to continue to do what I'm told to do, which I typically don't do, but figured I'd help them out. So anyway, We'll just, uh, I'll just keep on working, keep on making my thumbs sore, pushing these things on. I think our next step is to actually lay out the fabric. Luckily, it's warmed up enough that it's getting freaking muddy. So we get to deal with the mud around the trailer right when it's time to get down and put the fabric on. So that should be fun. And we need to figure out where to start. The reason it's so important to figure out where to start is because you're going to have the two seams come together. And so you're going to have that natural seam there where you're going to Velcro. He has a sewer outlet here and then another sewer outlet right here. So we're going to have to have two seams on it to make sure he has access for a sewer. But I'm thinking that probably right here will be the best place to start. 
So we'll start with the fabric here and work our way back, coming down the trailer, and then come all the way around. At least that's my thought right now. I'll run it past Chet and Ronnie and see what they think, and then go from there. We're gonna go ahead and put the skirting on. Now, when you get a roll of skirting, we ordered extra. I would recommend doing the same because who knows, we'll probably mess up. We're hoping to think of an easy way to roll this out, but I think we just have to do this. We're gonna try to keep it as much of one sheet as possible. We also got a little bit taller than we needed because down at this back end of the trailer is a little bit higher than the, the front. And we wanted to make sure that we had enough. Do we have to go over here? We should be pretty good right there. Okay. Like it should be, if I stay about right here, a little higher, about right there. Okay. I think we're good. First one's always a worry. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pop through. The one video I watched, the guy had his needle nose and helped push that. I might grab mine. Okay, now I need to put a little button on it. What about the heat? We're gonna cut out right around it to keep it from Perfect. melting. You At least that's the plan. Do you want me to build you some sort of tool real quick? Like go get you a socket that you can just be like, pop. Oh. Hey, yeah. yeah. Small, let me yeah. go grab a small. I'll bet you Gene's got a small socket. Okay, we're still good. Of course, I dropped it in the mud. Oh, come on. <laughs> Freaking fingers don't work anymore. I'm getting old. It's a hamburger. It's greasy. Seriously, I would like to blame it on that. <laughs> Not incompetence. Okay, are we still good? It would be nice if they had a little tool to help push these in. I'm sure they could develop something or have a recommendation of some sort. Check this out. Big solid maybe. I knew we, we all invited have it tools. for a reason. We all have tools. So maybe we consider selling the, the company a socket. Yeah, that would, easy so, snap. So good recommendation. Use the socket and the extension push these on. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So had to put another button in. Did you? Yeah. A button here? Probably have to put one in. Oh, maybe you need to get a smaller. Yep. Here. I'm already ready for you. Oh gosh. <laughs> Look at this guy. So prepared. I was thinking the back end of a quarter inch drive extension or something. Even smaller. Yeah, that'll be better. All right, so we got a a Craftsman quarter inch. Quarter inch drive. Seems to fit pretty good. Quarter inch drive with a quarter inch socket. So much easier. Hey, can I help you breathe with this? <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer you third. <laughs> All, right. All right, now we can, let's go through and put the button box on. One thing you have to make sure that you actually push them on all the way because it feels like they're on and then you go a little bit farther. Just trying to stay level as we go. You've overlapped about how far? Oh, two, two inches. Two inches there? Yeah, I would say pretty close to two inches. I'm not sure what we do here because it's kind of all. <laughs> this is a tough part, getting around this bumper. So we've cut down and now we're just cutting out around and trying to fit it together as good as possible. And then if we need to, if we need to, we'll tape a piece around with some Velcro. But I, I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to do it, yeah. but comment below if there's a better way to do this. Okay, Kara, will you hold that where it should be? Just 
doing a little walk around. The guys have about got it done. Uh, they are actually just finishing up the front right there and then they'll um, just kind of finish up that corner where they're meeting back up on the other side. But just wanted to give you a little look. Of course, they don't have the, the bottom done yet. That'll be the next step where they tuck all the excess uh, fabric underneath the PVC and then there's clamps we'll show you that they'll clamp those on just to keep it nice and secure. In the meantime I will just give you a little walk around. Of course we showed you all the chaos with this and the bumper and the power cord and everything there but I think they did a pretty fair job kind of navigating all that and this side with all the slides, little alcove there, they had to go through. And, there are areas too. and here they are, just finishing up the seam right there on the corner. Now that the skirting's all in and buttoned down, the guys are going through and just kind of outlining these bins so they can still be accessed. Yeah, and we just don't want to mess up cutting. <laughs> After doing all this, that would just suck to now mess up a cut and I'm sure we could patch it if we had to, but just trying to get it right the first time. That's the goal at least, which who knows if that'll actually happen. It's just hard because you can't see. We're just going by fill really. Or you could do it how Do It Bro does it. How, how does Do It Bro do it? And then just start cutting and then later on go, oh crap, now we gotta fix that. <laughs> if, if it was my trailer, <laughs> we'd be doing it that way. I'm not gonna do that to Chet. <laughs> just starting to do my cutting here. We've just kind of lined it up right along where the doors would open and we'll trim it up a little bit, that sort of stuff. But just getting a rough cut and then if we need to trim it more, we can. Just to the point of kind of getting the... What do you think right here? What are we thinking? What are you thinking right here? I think right as long there? as... Yeah. I mean, the ground's not perfect, so right. it won't be perfect. Yeah. But just going through, getting all the skirting tucked down underneath, finishing up the last few cuts, and then we're going to clamp on the skirting to the pipe. It's really coming around pretty good. Can I quit? Yeah, yeah, not bad. I mean, we spent more time BSing than actually working this last little bit, so. But, but can I quit? Yeah, whatever you want to do, buddy. Yeah, I'm leaving. I quit. I thought you were the bomb. <laughs> These little PVC clips go on really nice and easy. So you just kind of get it tucked under, and you want it so it's down touching. And then you just kind of give it a little push on. Hold it nice and tight. These corners are a little bit tricky, but yeah, it's coming around pretty good. Chet's just kind of finishing it up here, getting the Velcro put on right next to a sewer so he has access there. We figured there should be instruction somewhere and tools and all that sort of stuff. It was in with the Velcro, the last thing we possibly opened. This works really well to cut with. It's probably why they put it in there. So if you're ever opening up your packaging, open up everything so you can actually get your tools. Doing a final walk around, check, see where we can maybe put a couple more little clamps. Yeah, like right here, I think we need to put one um, right here as well, just to kind of hold that. Super impressed with how simple this Easy Snap system really is. If you're looking to keep your RV warm in the winter and avoid some of those more expensive skirting systems or getting some vinyl place that's going to charge you an outrageous amount of money, Check out Easy Snap. We'll put all the information down below and I, I think they'll really help you out. I know Chet's just so excited. He doesn't like being on camera, so, uh, but he just, he thinks this is really going to help. He's really excited for it. And I'll talk to him and see how it goes after a few months and see if it made any improvements, how much propane he used, all that sort of stuff. Because he was saying he's spending two or three hundred dollars a month in propane trying to keep this warm. Uh, wish I could have got it for him earlier this year, uh, but you know, better late than never story of my life. So as always, 
thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all those sort of things. Let us know what your experiences with skirting have been, if you've enjoyed having it, if it's been a success for you, all those sort of things. And as always, enjoy your weekend.